Ciao, 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 ciao. Did y'all see tonight's episode of Scandal? Honey, Shonda Rhimes, you gave me life. Life, 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 life. And that very life that tonight's episode of Scandal gave me, child, as soon as it went off, that very life just flew out of me. I was drained after watching this episode. I had to smoke me a cigarette. I had to pour me a glass of wine, child. I even had to go sit down on the toilet and drop a couple of babies off at the pool just to alleviate some stress. Because, child, my head was spinning through tonight's episode of Scandal. Shonda, I would have been okay if you would have made tonight's episode the season finale. Like, you should have just ended the season like this and made our ass wait until September later on when the new um, fall season began. But, child, let's go ahead and get into uh, Miss Scandal. Let's first start with Cyrus and James. You know, James, I hope, I hope and I pray, I hope and I pray that tonight... You had a learning lesson. And that learning lesson is to learn how to keep your damn mouth shut. Keep your nose out of other people's business. Because if you would have, you wouldn't have been in the situation that you were in. You wouldn't have had, your husband wouldn't have had to have you stripped down in the house, buck ass naked. Just to make sure you ain't got no wire. And just to make sure that he can trust you that you won't go run your mouth and tell everybody. Which which, which we thought that's what you was going to do, child. But you came through in the end. But I hope this was a le learning lesson because you had no idea. You had no idea that your life was in dangers tonight. Not danger, but dangers. You ain't had no idea that your life was in danger, child. Because your husband... Had them put a hit out on you because you was about to go in there with the feds and snitch. You was about to go in there and snitch your husband, child. But I'm glad that you came too and you got your marbles back or whatever. Or you got your sense back and you made the decision not to do it. And child, you did it so elegantly too. Um, but anywho, like I said, learn how to keep your mouth shut. Stay out of people's business and just stay home. Plant some sunflower seeds, um, grow the little, not grow child, but raise the little black baby, the little black accessory baby that you and Cyrus have and keep your mouth shut going forward so nobody else won't be putting no hits on you because I really thought that you was going to be dead by the end of this and the season ain't over with yet, but I just knew you was going to be dead real soon, but you still alive. I hope Shonda keeps you alive. But that little scene between Cyrus and James, that was some intense stuff. That was really, really intense. Cyrus really showed us how vulnerable he was tonight by, you know, letting James in that, you know, I had dreams. I had aspirations. I wanted to be the leader of the free world. I was built for this. You know, he was ready to lead America or whatever. And, you know, he showed that vulnerability. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? But at the end of the day, Cyrus, as much as you want to be that man, your role is to be behind the president because, child, even in the make-believe world, in the world of TV and Shonda Rhimes and everybody, America is not ready for no homosexual president. So know your role, fall in line, and just be the man behind the man. You do that very, very well when you're not hiring people to kill people and stuff like that. But I tell you one thing. you know, People always say never, ever push anybody against the wall because they come out swinging. And they come out swinging. Don't ever, ever push a queen against the wall either. Because not only is the queen going to come out swinging, honey, but she's going to come out voguing as well. And that's exactly what um, David, not David, James as did to David's case. He vogue down the runway all over his case and then did a big boom, shawam at the end of it. Child... James, you sprinkled fairy dust all over David's case and you made him look completely stupid. And that's exactly what needed to happen. David, once again, you're a loser. You're a loser. You keep trying and trying and trying to convict people and you ain't ever, you haven't been able to make a successful conv uh, conviction since season one. 
damn it, since season one. I would never ever hire you to be my lawyer because if I was to hire you to be my lawyer, even in the make real life, make believe, whatever, child, I'd be dead somewhere. Lethal injection, then had the electric chair. I'd be locked up in life in prison because your ass is failing to prove, um, to provide the burden of proof. Just ridiculous. You're just a sorry ass lawyer. You need to go ahead and just give up and retire. And go be a, a pilot or go um, drive buses or go be a fireman or go join the military. Go do something else useful, child, because obviously you are not a useful lawyer at all. You go ahead and go with Abby somewhere and y'all have strange kids and do strange things off this little strange connection that the two of y'all have. Speaking of y'all, child, and, and David, you so stupid, you got... Abby and Olivia and Huck and all them got the little bobblehead in your house and the whole damn time little bobblehead recording everything that you say or do. You a sorry ass lawyer. So just go ahead and just give it up, child. Anyway, let's talk about them gladiators. Child, I tell you one thing. Olivia know where her help come from. Any other time when Fitz was dying in the hospital bed, shot in the head and stuff. You, um, you know, you there, you in his closet having a breakdown, you laying up with Fitz, um, in the hospital bed, in the waiting room, you pining after him and all kind of stuff like that. But now when your ass in trouble, you went home and you went over to Pope and Associates because them bitches got your back over there. You trained them very, very well. Um, when Abby got all upset, when she found out that, you know, you was responsible for David's ex-wife lying to you, lying to her about him hitting her. <laughs> Olivia was bold too. She said, did you pay her? She said, yes. <laughs> Olivia said, yes. And she just sat there and looked at her. But anyway, Harrison had to get your ass together. Remember, girl, she saved all of us. She fixed all of us. So you can sit here and get mad all you want to. But at the end of the day, you and David being a couple was a problem and it needed to be fixed. So therefore, the decision was made to fix the two of you. And it was, and that's all. Straight like that. In that order. It needed to be fixed. So go ahead and get yourself together and bring your ass back here with that damn tape or that memory card that we need so we can exonerate everybody. And then here come Quinn finding some way to make things all about her. She going to want to come shaking. I have $5,000. I want to hire you to kill Hollis. I done told y'all once before, Hollis is a powerful white man. A rich, powerful white man. He ain't going nowhere anytime soon. And then Hulk crazy ass tell me something. I kill him for free if you want me to, but you got to leave if I do do it. Child, there's some crazy holes up in Olivia, um, Pope and Associates, but them the type of ride or die bitches and ride or die chicks that you need on your side. And then Olivia. Olivia, Olivia, Olivia. Girl, you know I love you. I talk a lot of shit about you. I call you a hoe. I call you a home wrecker. I call you everything. But child, your ass was scared. You went straight to that damn bottle. You told Harrison, come sit down and drink with me because it ain't good. Child, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going on. So child, you were sitting there thinking like, oh child, I'm about to go to bed. That was so funny. That was so funny. But Olivia... What I'm proud of, what I'm happy tonight is that Addison came to Edison came to your door and he knocked. Damn right, Bill Costley came and knocked on your door instead of just walking in. I was glad to see that that you finally took the key back from him. It's about damn time. Show her some damn respect, Edison. Just be walking up in her house anytime you 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 feel like it. And Olivia, another thing. What what orbit what? planet are you on child you sitting there telling that man tell me some love supposed to be painful and devastating and hurtful and all kind of shenanigans what kind of newfangled shit is that nobody don't believe that crap no more or ain't nobody ever believe that the bible the good book tells us that love is patient love is kind it does not envy hallelujah it does not boast it is not proud 
It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. Honey, that's what the book says, the great book. That book don't say nothing about no love being hurtful and um, you bleeding out your ears and pulling out your teeth and cutting off your toes. And the Bible don't say nothing about no love being hurtful and stuff like that. Girl, you need to get yourself together. I knew you ain't had no morals. Just like Star Jones had tweeted about you and your character. Um, just terrible. Just a whore. Home wrecker. But I bet you one thing. You felt that damn pain when Fitz told you I changed my mind. You ain't know what to see. Girl, I wish you could have seen your face. That, that bottom lip of yours was trembling. You was like, what, what, what? Yes, Fitz said, Fitz said I changed my mind. That's damn right. He changed his mind. He don't want to be with you no more. You ain't had no face. In, you ain't had no faith in him. That motherfucker cracked your damn face right there in the church. In the church, cracked your face. And all you had to do was, oh, pick it up, pick it up, oh, pick it up, pick it up, pick your face up, girl, because it was just shattered all across the all across the floor. But honey, the highlight of tonight. Oh, yes. The highlight of tonight was that old bitty Verna. Child, she was hell on wheels on her damn deathbed. She was straight turning it in her last days. That, you know what? I like Verna. Verna went out in style and in grace. She's been that old supportive old bitty all this time. But, child, she let everybody know who she was by the time that she was going to leave this damn show. She was reading folks left and right. Had them sat there and told Olivia, honey, you basically, you are not the um the pillar of courage that you think you are or whatever. She told Olivia off and as Olivia was leaving, she told Olivia to chin up. And that's just like an old person. An old person to sit there and tear you off and then hug you and kiss you, give you a piece of church candy and some big red gum and send you on your way, child. And that's exactly what Verna did. Chin up, Olivia, chin up. And then she had nerve to tell Fitz. Verna was so disrespectful tonight. I loved it. She told Fitz, you are not the president. She called him a stupid child floating around, all kind of stuff like that. And the only reason she came clean tonight, quiet as his cap, was to honor his father. Because she owed that to his father. That bitch ain't say, I, I owe you this. She said, I owe it to your father. Now that's a read. That's a read, honey. That's how you read somebody on your damn deathbed. And she told um, Olivia tonight, she said, confession. What did she say? Let me, I'm reading it right here. She said, confession, confession solves nothing. It does more harm than good. And that was probably the wisest thing that you said because, child, it did you a lot of harm. When you sat there and you confessed to Fitz, guess what Fitz did? <laughs> he murdered your ass. The little old lady crossing her hands on her, on her stomach like that with the pressure and took her oxygen mask off. That wasn't right. Now, Shonda Rhimes, you ain't had to do that. You ain't had to have Fitz kill um, old Judge Cancer like that. But Cancer took her right on out, child. And I bet you she would. She ate them words saying that um, confession solves nothing. It just does more harm than anything else. And then Fitz went home to his um, to his wife. And that's how it should be. He went home to his wife. He went home to Millie. And he basically went home and asked her to be his ride or die chick. You know, you done been there for me since thick, thick and thin. A lot of people call um, Millie an opportunist and she's selfish or whatever. But no, Millie is a white woman, a desperate white woman fighting for her marriage. And she told Cyrus... Through hell or high water, when I married him, it was for rich or poor, for better or for worse. And he is not about to divorce me. And in the end, guess who wins? The wife. He went home to her. His ass knew that she induced that labor all that time. But he went on home to his wife and he basically want to know, he want to use again. But are you going to be here for me? Yes. And she said, I'm going to be your ride or die bitch or whatever. And Because I, I would have hated to see Millie. Just like she said, if, if, if Fitz would have divorced her, she would have went nuclear on his ass. And then she would have danced on his grave. She would have took him for every penny that he had. Would have took his kids from him. And then at the end of the day, you know what she said? 
And then I'm going to run for office. Child, that's a bad, bad bitch. But y'all, tonight's episode of Scandal was fantastic. It had my head spinning, but it was good. It could Shonda Rhimes, you could have just left it the way that it was. But I'm actually looking forward to all of these quote-unquote new beginnings that's going to start based off this preview that we see for next week. But I'm tired. I will see y'all later. Holla back. What if? <laughs>